feature walls inside, but what about making part of your fence a focal point? Here with more, Benjamin Moore, Sharon Gregg. <laughs> It is absolutely beautiful. So this is something I think a lot of us don't take into consideration, making your fence the focal point. Well, absolutely. The fence tends to be very utilitarian. It's totally. just out there. But a lot of times people, by ignoring it, make it draw more attention to itself by staining it a red cedar or a really bright orange when you've got nothing else out there that ties in with that. So you really yeah. want to think about how it ties in with the rest of your space. And you know what? It's spring. We want to get outside. So bring some of the indoors outside, outside. with you. And, and you want that, you want to bring the function, like some of the interior design rules. You know, we think about function. You think about what you're going to feature. So yes. in the backyard, the fence isn't the feature. It's the foliage. It's the beautiful colors, which I right. can't help myself thinking you look like all those beautiful Thank spring you. and summer colors. Very so you want bright, very that, vibrant. Exactly. So you want everything else to sort of be a backdrop to yes. that, right? And now, you know what a lot of us don't consider? Going blue. Like, right. I'm so happy you did this. I was saying to the audience, okay, I'm just not daring enough. I'm not there yet. I'm too conservative. But, but this is a beautiful way um, to sort of add just a, a focal point to your wall to your fence, the way that the wood is laid as yes. well, that chevron pattern, the fact that Absolutely. you've done blue, like gorgeous, Sharon. So you want to really think about all of those things. And if you're staining, if you're going to the effort of doing it anyway, yeah. then this is the time to think about the color. So the blue, and again, the feature area, right? So the blue is a great color because it kind of color blocks this whole area. Mm -hmm. So we've got this fantastic furniture from Jardin de Ville, and I was yes. kind of inspired by this blue. You and I um, are going to fight for that chair we are. after the show. <laughs> We I know both it. want that chair, and the thing is, we can both sit in it we together. We can. Always <laughs> toss it out with it's other people. Generous. It's good. You can fit three. We're good. So you want it, you don't, inside we say, you know what, think about the color of your furniture and then bring the colors to the wall. So you want to do that to some degree, but at the same time, I know you're not going to be staining, like you don't want to do a lot of maintenance outside, right? right? So I think blue is actually a really nice color. It's, it's, like, the, it's like the sky. It is a great backdrop for everything. But what I did here by designing it in a herringbone pattern yeah. is it kind of creates art on your wall that you can look at in the winter time if you have snow and you yes. still see some color out there but then the rest of the perimeter so if you just imagine this silver gray this is a translucent Lovely. stain so it keeps everything fairly neutral and it's probably what the natural color of the wood the cedar the white cedar is going to turn to anyway right. so it's not going to be a lot of maintenance for that back area yes. but this feature point which is sort of in your dining area or in a wonderful lounge area this is where you know you can change this it's not a huge thing it's I used a semi-solid stain okay I used arbor coat in a color called blue note mm. so believe it or not we do have colors in semi-transparent stains so in semi-solids so this is semi-solid so you get a little bit more color but you still see the beautiful texture of the wood okay. so I just wanted to show you quickly how different like semi solid you're going to cover a lot of sins so if you've got new wood boards that you're yep. putting up and you've got old wood boards you can tie everything in by using a semi transparent because whether it's on cedar it's on pressure treated yep. it's on pine it looks fairly similar so what is the what's the difference between this is two? a pressure treated wood pressure so if you see the bottom okay. here you can kind of see it's still got greenish. That, that greenish yep. so you, you still see the green but it's not too much whereas on the cedar you still see the red but it's not too much got it so really important to think about you primed it um, that no good question though oh, Tracy. You did it. when it comes to fencing you do not need to do a primer if you're using Yay. a stain absolutely so whether okay. it's translucent like this this yes. is the silver gray it's gonna it's um, a translucent stain so it's gonna show more of the wood color below right so you definitely want to test it out first make sure you got the color right no problem put the stain on and when it's a fence you don't need to put any sort of a top coat like this is protective from from the UV yeah. from the rain so again translucent in an oil or a water base on its own here shows a lot more of the wood mm -hmm. semi solid is going to show a little less of the wood grain so it hides it and then you can go to a full solid which you can actually get in any yep. of the you know 4000 plus colors and then that's going to kind of hide everything so you kind of go okay. to that at the end when your wood is sort of really showing its age right um, is this one coat two coat this is one coat so again oh my gosh see i'm just trying to be lazy here yes. and i love what and you're and telling it's me it's working no primer one coat no top coat no 
chalk no coat. No chalk coat. So That's you beautiful. do it, and depending on the environment that it's in, it's yes. especially on a vertical surface, it's going to last a long time. And again, yeah. if you put something like color in an area that you can handle and keep something more neutral around the perimeter of your space, it's going to be fairly easy. Yes. But really, bring the indoors out. 